Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, NS5344. Uh, there's obviously no notes on this one. I figured since I'd asked everyone to make a little bit of an introduction, I would do one too. You know, fair is fair. So here's a tiny bit about me. Hi. Uh, I got my master's and my bachelor's from Texas Tech, and I got my certified dietary manager CFPP from the University of Florida. I also got an associate's from Amarillo College. More about that in a little bit. So what do I do? I work for Baptist Community Services, which is a continuum of care organization uh, focused on elder care. So we work with everybody from uh, independent care to rehab. So if somebody gets a knee injury and they need to work on that for physical therapy, that to long-term care, all the way to hospice care. Uh, I'm also the licensed dietitian for the Wesley Community Center, which is Amarillo's uh, Senior Congregate Meal Program Center. Oh, I should mention that I, well, I said I am, work for Baptist Community Services. I am the entire clinical nutrition care team. Just me. That's it. Uh, so, how did I get, you know, where did I come from? Uh, I actually went to school... I uh, studied fine art and graphic design. I specifically worked on oil paints, and I got to the point when I was coming to my senior year that I realized I didn't want to do things that people wanted me to do, which is an alarming thing to be at that point, you know, to realize that at that point. I realized that I was a fussy artist, and uh, it was going to be a difficult struggle for me. So, um, Maybe you're wondering, how did I go, how do we get from art degree to, or almost art degree, to uh, dietitian? Well, it's my five simple steps and breakdown of how to take my career path if you ever thought that was a thing that you should do. So like I said, I was coming up to my senior year in college for art, realizing that I was going to earn a degree that I was never probably going to use professionally, not at least full on. And I was getting married soon, which is an alarming kind of circumstance to be in. And I had a friend who said, uh, she was a kitchen manager. She said, I need people. Why don't you come work for me? And they'll give you some time to think about what you want to do and you know, earn some living money at the time. So I've, I had no other plans. So I became a dishwasher. And I was a dishwasher for a while at this facility. It was a, it was a long-term care facility. And that was my first exposure to long-term care nutrition and elder patients in general beyond, you know, grandma. After working as a dishwasher, I became a cook. And I knew absolutely nothing about cooking when I started. Now I can do all that fun, fancy stuff, flip things in pans, and, and I know how to do a julienne things and things like that, mince them. I didn't then. Everything I learned, I learned on the job. And I have, I picked that picture very, 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 what uh, I guess on purpose. That's not, you can't be very, very on purpose, but you know what I mean, because I have flambé. That was another thing I learned how to do, is how to flambé stuff. So after working as a cook for a while, um, I just said I went, I, through, uh, I didn't go to Florida, but through the University of Florida, I got my certified dietary manager's um, certification. And uh, that let me be, a, a CDM, if you have not worked with one before, is a bit like a diet tech who also knows how to budget for a restaurant. And so that background, a CDM works very closely with a dietitian for a long-term care facility. So that got me exposure to working with the residents more and working with the dietitian. And I liked working with the residents and I got really curious about what the dietitian was doing. I wanted to know more about her angle on things. So I went to Emerald College, as I said, and got my basics because, you know, an art degree doesn't have a lot of science focus to it. So I had to go back and get some core science courses. And then in my mid-30s, I went back to school. I went to Texas Tech and I felt exactly like this. And then did the whole thing, got my bachelor's, did the internship program, got my master's, and that brings us to here. Uh, I don't recommend this pathway for anybody, but it, it does work. Fun fact about me is I am a synesthete. Uh, I have chromesthesia specifically, which is a transfer of sound to color and color to sound. Uh, I'm associative, 
which means that if you're listening to a, like say if we're listening to a band, I might tell you that they were a bit off because they sounded a bit too green uh, and not like they were new. But, you know, I, I get I get strange looks a lot of times from people that don't know me well. Um, this is, by the way, very harmonious but very loud screen. So who who's in the house with me? I'll say I got my, my wife that we married in, in school, in, well, not really in school, between school. Um, we have our dog, Sam. We have Iggy, who, if, if history is any, uh, if history is any guide, uh, he will be joining us for Zooms. We have Kitty, who is a retired show cat. And we have Gus, who is a babied foundling. And as far as the art stuff goes, I still do it. I do it, you know, now, um, I studied oil painting a lot, and I also studied you know, graphic design, and that was at just at the point when graphic design was going from traditional materials into graphic design, like uh, you know, digital graphic design. And so I had a studio that looked a lot like that. I don't now, and this one isn't mine. Uh, now, my studio looks like this. It's an iPad, specifically I have an iPad Pro with a little thingy around it. It's called a sketchboard. And uh, that, that's my entire setup at this point. And mostly what I do with that is uh, comic books and comic strips. Uh, it's not big on the superhero comics. I, I prefer other mediums, but I, or other genres, I mean, but I, I love comics. I, don't, I do other stuff, though. I have done some scientific illustrations. I worked on children's books, but comics is really my first choice. I play the bass. Uh, um, I, I'll play almost anything. My favorite genres are uh, rock, punk, and heavy metal. You know, I, all those obnoxious garage band kind of things. That, that's what I'm into. I am a huge hockey fan. Uh, I got, and I'm a big Dal Dallas Stars booster. Not because I have any loyalty to Texas particularly, but because when I got into hockey, the Stars were on a hot streak, and I followed them. And I just kind of never stopped following them. So I guess like everything else, I sort of fell into the Dallas Stars. I am a huge gamer, and I am that kind of pretentious, obnoxious gamer that will tell you that games are an art form. And, and I truly believe that. These are some of my favorite series up here. Uh, and I'm also one of those obnoxious gamers who will say, oh, I've beaten all of the Soulsborne games, and they're really not that hard once you get used to them. Um, I've beaten all of them except... Uh, Demon Souls. I've never beaten that one. And uh, Bloodborne here has its own little special spot because it's probably based on the number of replays I've done my favorite game of all time. And I am a huge horror fan. I don't like uh, gore and things like slashers that much. I'm much more into suspense and creepiness. Uh, to borrow from Yahtzee Croshaw, more ugh, and less ugh. So, you know, not too much Friday the 13th or Saw, more like Silent Hill or uh, Shutter Island. So that is a bit about me, guys. I will see you later. I'm looking forward to a great semester. I do try to have a lot of fun with these. I enjoy doing this class, and I appreciate having the opportunity to do it. I'll catch you all later. I'm looking forward to re learning about you. Have a great one. Bye.